and welcome to a brand new episode of Mirana Dialogues with me, Vinay Tiwari, uh, in ex- association with Exchange for Media. And I'm absolutely delighted and happy to have a guest today uh, who I am possibly the most excited to speak to. You know, we've spoken to many uh, sectors in the past, but this particular sector has been in the news. You can't miss this particular industry and you can't miss the company he represents. Uh, warm welcome to Atif Mehta. Uh, Vice President and Head of Marketing for Baijus. Uh, it's a name that possibly everybody in India currently now knows. And if for some reason you haven't heard of it before, just you just need to switch on a television match and you'll find that name emblazoned across every single Indian cricketer's uh, jerseys as well. And I'll speak a thing or two about Atit later on, but coming to the more important questions, Atit, you know, in the previous episodes, we've spoken to a few industry captains uh, who belong to sectors which possibly had a very difficult last year. I mean, you know, there, there was there was the pain of the pandemic and of course the lockdown and of course the changing consumer pattern behavior that their industry suffered. Uh, but as stars aligned, the way things panned out, there was one sector which possibly became India's brightest and the biggest sunrise in, uh, ed, the sector, which is the ed tech sector, the sector that you, uh, you know, you guys started off, uh, you know, even before the pandemic started. Uh, and I'm sure that, that your experience with the pandemic was very different from the way, say, in a sector like the auto or, or, or some of the other service industries planned out. Uh, how has your uh, pandemic been? And I'm, and I'm asking this not just from the negativity of the pandemic, but also in terms of the way the industry has planned out and the acceptability uh, that the last year's uh, experience forced people to do. Oh, so for, first and foremost, uh, thank you very, very much for having me uh, do this conversation with you, Vinay. Coming to your question, while none of us as individuals wanted the last 12 months what we went through, but from a business perspective, it couldn't have been better. Yeah. Since the schools were shut down and what we all realized is that in such a situation, schools is the first thing to shut down and will be the last thing to open up. And that's exactly where the things have panned out. We have not yet seen schools opening up and the academic year is expected to start in a couple of months and we don't have clarity. There was a lot of anxiety amongst parents and they were fearing a learning loss. They were fearing a year of learning going off their kids. And the inflection point happened when people started downloading the the app and what we, what we saw in the last first five years of our journey, we saw that happening in the last 12 months. So from that aspect, exponential growth of the sector, exponential growth of the adoption of online learning because there was no other option available and nobody wanted a learning loss. So in a way, it, it wasn't the best way to achieve the numbers what we achieved, but yeah, we are happy that uh, the digital ecosystem, the digital learning piece caught the imagination of uh, our nation and uh, students started moving and learned digitally and did not end up losing a year or losing a learning year. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, I have always believed that edtech as a sector, uh, despite all that is talked about it, is, is also fulfilling a big gap. I mean, and last year provided a gap which was also physical in nature. I mean, you just couldn't go to a classroom, teachers couldn't access uh, you know, anything. And, and obviously this gap got filled. And I think the parents' biggest worry is possibly a lack of continuity in education or even learning. Uh, even if there was a break in a bit of continuity, the learning curve shouldn't stop, especially at younger ages, uh, which is an absolute must. So absolutely. I mean, I, I completely agree with you that this was, uh, nobody would have wanted a pandemic, but of course uh, you guys came in and filled in a gap, which possibly would not have happened if we did not have startups like the ones uh, which you uh, brought in industry. But I, and before I get down to the more sectoral specific questions, I had a few curiosity based questions and I'm sure everybody has those questions which is this look I mean education per se has three or four different segments to it there is of course the primary education there is secondary there is higher and then there's of course the professional education Uh, which of these four sectors so to speak have been the biggest growth engines for you and also the most exciting for you I mean is there a differentiation in the way each one is growing or do you see a similarity in the patterns no, certainly, because if you if you break this down and if you look at the professional segment, it's very important to understand that what is the addressable universe. Yeah, there are X number of people or students who write a professional examination. But when you look at uh, primary and secondary education, you have close to about 270 or million students in India. And then if you look at pre-primary, those consist of about three or four standards. If I start with nursery, which is LKG, going up to standard two, standard three, that's about four to five years. 
and then you have about uh, seven to eight years, which is your uh, primary and secondary, and then your professional examination. So the middle two segment was where the maximum amount of students are there in terms of number of years. Yeah, because the professional segment is uh, too small in terms of number of uh, addressable students. So that saw the fastest growth if one has to break the education into four parts. I see. There is one other segment that exists in India and that possibly the contrast is most intense uh, in a country like India. And that's the gap between the urban and the rural India. And if I break down urban further, maybe entire A towns and then entire P and C towns as well. Was there a bit of a differentiation there as well? No, even it was a big, big uh, pleasant surprise for all of us. And what we also realized is that at least in tier one uh, markets, even in tier two markets, at least the one top 1%, 2% of schools adopted to digital learning because the, the, the students had the hardware available in terms of a mobile device or a laptop. The schools created the LMS system. So for them, it was not, not that big a worry. But the biggest segment to get hit because of schools being shut was the belly of the population, and which is then scattered across the pop strata as far the, the states are concerned. So the majority of the growth happened from tier two, tier three markets, while growth also happened from uh, tier one markets. But the big, big growth came from tier two, tier three. I see. That's interesting. And, and, and because, Atit, you mentioned about how the biggest chunk of, of course, uh, you know, the students belong to the primary and the secondary segment. And of course, the professional segment is going to be the smallest, pretty obviously. Let's spend a little time speaking about these two segments, because that's also the segment that possibly concerns not just individuals, but families. I mean, every family in India's biggest concern is, of course, the children's education. And, and each one is looking for its own way uh, of making it better and better than the previous generation. I mean, I think all of us are products of our parents having sacrificed and invested a lot in us uh, reaching where we have simply because they put education above everything else. And that's the way India is. Uh, but one specific point I wanted to ask you that, that edtech as a sector uh, pretty much is linked to how well the growth in the formal education sector happens. Uh, it, the, it goes together. It, one can't happen without the other. Uh, the government's new education policy has put a target of 50% uh, you know, uh, in gross enrollment by, I think, another 10 years or so. Uh, but clearly, there's a lot of headroom in that, uh, you know, in that sector. I mean, we still have a long way to go, even to get the children to come uh, into the formal uh, sector as well. So in that sense, does, say, uh, an edtech major and a leading player, possibly the biggest player right now you have in the world, like Baiju, look at the formal education sector more closely on how that's growing? Because without that growing, there will be some amount of stunted growth for you. No, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, there is no better place than a physical classroom for getting the right level of education. And that needs to start, that needs to grow, and we need to have better schools in terms of infrastructure. We need to have better connectivity because now everything is moving digital. So school needs to create that ecosystem. So yeah, we, we closely follow uh, everything in the offline world. Yeah, it's very important that uh, we also partner with uh, the, the educational boards to ensure that the right level of uh, education is imparted to all the students who, for, who are part of the primary uh, and secondary uh, segment. Plus, it's also very important that we feel that teachers, this is the golden age of teachers. Yeah, because if, if we are not able to get the right quality of teachers, the right pedagogy which the teachers provide, then we will never become an educational powerhouse. So everything now works in tandem. Now the digitization has happened as a, as a country. Yeah, people have experienced the online version of studying and nobody is saying that you need to replace a school and only study online. This is a plus one because no student is alike. Yeah, come home and learn through the digital content which is available will certainly help you conceptually clear your doubts. So the online is now a plus one. Schools will start and we are hopeful and we are all uh, looking forward to school starting. And we are, we are very, very closely following the entire, uh, now the new school normal as we put in and see how the next uh, three to five years shape up, which we very strongly believe is going to be a blended learning approach.
I mean, it's, it's very apt that you mentioned things about how, you know, technology is playing a big part. And of course, the sometimes the inconsistent penetration of technology that India has, it's a very diverse country. Uh, you will have certain bandwidth issues in some cities, maybe in some parts of the country, you may, even in cities, there are some places where there may be an issue. So I, I, it's very interesting. I just, uh, you know, I wanted to understand your mind on a very specific issue that came to my mind when I was just reading up a little bit about how this industry is panning out. You know, ironically, when I was growing up and I was in school, the first hint of a mass universal education platform, a technology-based education system was actually the UGC countrywide classroom. And I remember in 84, 85, when we, actually nobody had heard of something like that, uh, you, Doordarshan used to put out this one hour classroom during the afternoon. So in that sense, uh, they understood the importance of putting out education in a more qualitative manner at a mass level. Uh, and of course, now with technology being, I mean, of course, there was no technology then, uh, but now. But having said that, the reason I brought up the UGC example is this. Even today, uh, for education to really, I mean, for you or, or, or any edtech major to become a partner in the process of educating India, uh, it's very important that we keep looking at another segment that gets marginalized whenever something like e-learning comes in. Uh, which is more over 500 million people who possibly still don't have access to smartphones. They're still on 2G. Uh, and this is the number that the TRAI gives us. Uh, do you believe that even for a company like Baiju, which is investing heavily in, in of course, making uh, online education extremely popular, there may be a cause to even consider, say, something like a television platform to address that 500 million segment that will still take a few years to reach, uh, you know, the optimum level of uh, high-tech uh, phone access or gadget access. No, one can certainly look at a broadcast platform or like, like television to impart education. But the beauty of the business is that education is very customized and very personalized. Yeah. Uh, the, if I am in a seven standard grade and you are in a seven standard grade, I will understand and learn a subject faster or slower than you would. Yeah. And then there are multiple subjects and multiple uh, uh, sort of grades. So one can look at broadcasting education and which we tried doing it in our small way. During the lockdown, we started Baiju's classes. And since there were no classes happening, we had our own teachers, India's best teachers on a scheduled basis. So there was a weekly schedule, there was a monthly schedule and uh, sessions were scheduled and uh, the students had to just log in, but it still does not address the question in terms of connectivity and half of the country still not penetrated or there will be uh, problems in uh, having the right bandwidth to stream a video or to stream a session but yeah slowly and gradually it is moving the, the best part is what we were three years ago and what we are right now and what we would be uh, three years down the line it is growing at a very very fast rate so over a period of time the country should get connected and everybody will have access and that's exactly what we intend doing that reaching we want to democratize education we right. want to have education going to look and corner of the country and ensuring that every student in that age group gets the school level education. So putting it on a television, it's an option, but we have yet not tried it. Right. Now, I mean, look, uh, I, I'm sure Baiju's have already addressed this issue, but for those who are not very familiar with how you approach this, I have a very specific question. Look, in India, I mean, I grew up in Lucknow, for instance, and of course, uh, uh, you know, in those days, CBSE was not a very popular board. Now we had ISC and ICC, which is also a more popular board in those towns. Uh, and now you have different state boards also. Uh, and each state uh, in India varies in the way they teach, in the way they expect, and even in the way they mark and assess their students. So there are very different expectations. Uh, and I remember there are fables about how somebody would say, oh, you're from X, X state's board. It's so tough. Nobody gets more than 70%. And another one say, oh, but you guys are very lenient. You get 90. Uh, the point I'm making is there is a differentiation in the way uh, different boards operate. Now, how does Baiju's reconcile with that? Because that means there are um, almost 30, 35 models of how teaching is done uh, in different states. Uh, and of course, the different boards that exist. I mean, is there a, how does you, how do you work at the back end to, to handle something like that? Yeah. So our educational content, which we have created is mapped to 14 state boards. And it's also mapped to CBSE and ICSE. So if you are, a, for example, a Maharashtra state board, and you, you register yourself as Maharashtra State Board, the content which is then provided to you will be as per your Maharashtra State Board uh, curriculum, and that's applicable across the other state boards, ICSC and CBSC. But beyond that, if I have to teach you integers, or if I have to teach you some concept in physics or science, some boards might be having it in the second term, some might be having in the first term, some might be having in the next year. 
that's the only uh, significant difference but the concept of how to learn about integers or how to learn about pythagoras theorem is going to be common it's just that the it's 6 months prior or it's 6 months later so it's just aligning the curriculum and creating content which talks to that relevant uh, uh, board so that that's already mapped in 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 the paid version like right. one other question and i'm asking you to possibly reveal a trade secret maybe it's not a secret but i'm very curious to know because that answer will possibly help me understand how india is is, is approaching a problem and where the problem is which is this is there a specific subject or a bunch of subjects where you've seen the maximum demand uh, coming in because that will also tell you where the maximum gap is uh, in terms of the quality of education i mean i for instance grew up in 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 a city where uh, mathematics is universally bad i mean we all kind of liked or disliked maths because our teachers were good or bad you know depending on which school you went to uh, are there certain subjects that you have greater attraction for or much greater attraction for so uh over the years we had maths and science as our key subject delivery uh 6 8 months back we added social science which is history geography uh but if i have to look at the four subjects which we have certainly maths is the number one uh, pain point both for students as well as for uh, parents and we have all gone through that journey of trying to solve uh, uh, maths problem so maths is the number one uh, piece but we also strongly believe that spoken english right yeah is is also a concern because we were fortunate and uh, our parents as you mentioned uh, sent us to good schools and we ended up uh, learning and talking and speaking in english but that might not be the case uh, with majority of uh, students across the country so english should also become the spoken english written english can also become a big big uh, area of uh, concentration but as of right now it's maths oh absolutely i mean i'm i'm glad you brought up english because i remember uh, you know english is up in, in small town india it's seen as an aspirational language it's also seen as a passport to success uh, and i remember even in towns like azamgarh for instance last time when we were there during elections uh, every street in azamgarh had four or five english speaking tutorial classes i mean of course the quality was you know a lot to be desired uh, and i guess that's where you know things like byju's come in because that's more consistent and that's more qualitatively Uh, you know the qc of course is like you know million times better than what they are expiring to be but yes i mean english definitely i would have assumed uh, would be one of the big factors in india which brings me to the other question uh, adit that look i mean there has been obviously the along with technology and th- this is something that all of us you me all of us are possibly facing it there are issues and concerns that people have raised also about the uh, especially the primary and the secondary education level of the screen time that the children are having currently and how that is going to go up now one of the ways in which possibly uh, the edtech majors can work is also to look at encouraging children or parents to allow or or to push children to get out there and play and, and that becomes an equal part of what you guys are pushing but you see that as something which should be part of the dna on how things will move for the edtech sector because these concerns will remain and there will be those medical science doctors or even experts who will keep raising these issues about increasing screen time uh, for children which they deem to be harmful no absolutely so those concerns uh, from a parent perspective or from a school perspective will certainly remain but in today's day and age uh, a, a kid is spending a reasonable amount of time on a, on a digital device yeah and the whole premise is that if i am spending that time learning something rather than spending that time playing a mobile game or watching content which at my age i'm not supposed to watch it yeah it's still a better situation yeah there are concerns but the the positives are, are outweighing the negatives in terms of digital screen time and what we realized is that the we have moved from a blackboard to a digital screen and that's that's going to stay yeah but if you are able if it's not about spending 5 6 hours on 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 a online education content what one is asking for is spend about 20 25 minutes every day and and if you do that it's not going to impact your eyes it's not going to impact anything else but yeah if you end up spending 8 10 hours whether uh, reading something on a digital screen or watching uh, something or playing a game certainly content is not important then then the screen uh, will will damage your uh, eyes and everything else so half an hour in a day i think it's 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 much much more more the value of the output is much much more than uh, the impact which you see on yourself 
Right. I mean, one interesting, uh, uh, you know, aspect that comes out of it, India always had a very large tutors market and a lot of it was unorganized where you had a neighborhood, uh, you know, tutor who would just cater to the neighborhood or you also had a little more organized business approach. I mean, uh, I just acquired Akash, which was quite a major acquisition and quite a headline driving event. Uh, we've also had a unique country where you have towns which are almost tutorial towns. You have Kota, you have, you know, our towns in Andhra Pradesh, which virtually entirely revolve around, uh, you know, tutorials. Uh, and there is a certain amount of uh, mechanical approach that has come into it. It's almost like a factory uh, where, you know, people are, it's like another college where people are shoved in and, you know, and, and in Kota specifically, uh, we've seen uh, the negative side of that as well. I mean, there are quite a lot of stories about how children, students are going through enormous pressure. Uh, the rate of suicide in Kota is actually higher than the other districts of, of Rajasthan. And a lot of them are attributed to this coaching culture. Uh, in many ways, uh, isn't Baiju's then trying to just replace the informal tutorial tutor sector? And I'm asking this question for a specific reason, because till now, parents were engaging tutors because it brought in a sense of time discipline and some kind of organized approach in a child's life, that the tutor is going to come at four or you have to go at four, so you're forced to do that. Uh, so in that sense, you're doing, I mean, Baiju's doing a great job by actually allowing a more qualitative tutor, tutor based approach. But the negative of that is that it takes away the structured mindset that some parents do have in terms of the discipline that they want the children to go through. No, well, it does. It does. And slowly and gradually, that is also changing. Because what are we saying? We are saying that online education, Baiju's provides you conceptual clarity. Baiju's will provide you movies like video, which will help. And if I'm explaining something in a very well uh, produced two, three minutes video with high level of animation and graphic and explain that entire piece, you will start putting a schedule to yourself and you will not require somebody to push you for that four o'clock class or you know uh, uh, get the teacher in your house at uh, four o'clock in the evening. So it's all about making students fall in love with learning and we are doing that with conceptual concepts so we have, we explain you concepts which are conceptually staying you with you for the longest time in a format which is very easy to understand and comprehend so will it change overnight no it will not change but are we seeing a, a sort of a trend where people are now going and creating their own schedules and don't require, especially students don't require a push that please step out of the house and, and reach to your tuition classes uh, for, a, for a particular uh, slot. So it's moving and it is, it is moving in the right direction. So do you think in the next five years or so, we are actually now looking at a situation where, you know, with the rapid advancements in things like AI technology, for instance, uh, education can actually get so personalized that it becomes, a class really becomes specifically targeted at you. I mean, because I'm just assuming that with data investment technology, uh, AI will soon be able to actually almost predict patterns and figure out what a student wants, what it doesn't want, what he or she is weak in, what is the pattern of the questions she's asking, and so on and so forth. I mean, so are we looking at that situation where very soon you may have an absolutely customized uh, product, even if say there are three children in the same family and using the same platform? No, it will. In fact, it's already started. Now I'll just give you an example. Yeah, uh, I, I'm taking a test on Baiju's, yeah? And there are 20 questions. I get 10 questions wrong, I get 10 questions right. Those 10 questions, I'll have to retake the test to move to the second segment. The, the, the second set of questions which pops up to me are much of a much lower difficulty level. Even if I don't get 20 on 20 or 18 on 20, the difficulty level will come down. But if I have answered and if I move to the next stage, the level of difficulty goes up. And that's the way the video plays out. So that is hardcore machine has learned itself. The algorithms are working. And it, the more time spent, the more usage data we get, the system, the, the machine learning and the artificial intelligence behind that will become much, much more stronger. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised that if not five years, but in a couple of years, it will become as customized and as personalized as one would want. Wow, that, that, that sounds very, very exciting. I mean, I mean, I, some people might find it scary, but I find it exciting because technology is something you can't stay away from. Uh, it, it's part of our life. And I guess everybody doesn't even realize how much technology plays a part in all our lives. Very exciting. Let me move away from a little bit of technicality and ask you a question which, which, which interests me a lot personally. Uh, tell me a little bit of the story. I mean, you've been one of the lead principal architects behind 
Baiju's being the Indian cricket team sponsor, and, and I'm a big fan of cricket, so it's something that I follow very keenly. Uh, tell me a little bit of the backstory. Why why is it that Baiju's thought that you know using say somebody like a Shah Rukh Khan or or a film star or or cricket uh, was one way of actually ensuring that the world comes to know of something which is actually counterintuitive, which is education, because traditionally Indians don't put sports and education together. Yeah. So the Shah Rukh was basically using a film celebrity, a known name. It was the decision was taken about uh, five years ago for, for when we launched the business. That time nobody knew us. There was no online segment. There was nothing like ad tech. So it was more about mass reach and at least getting us noticed. And it's more. It, it was in the discovery phase. We wanted people to discover us, and, and a celebrity from that aspect makes sense. And we have continued, and then uh, the, every time when we went back, the business was looking bigger, stronger, and we, we continued that. But as for cricket is concerned, what our philosophy is, what we strongly believe is that for an overall, an education is not about the academics. Education is all about the the three hundred and sixty development of a child. Yeah, and what sports teaches you. no nothing can teach you it will teach you teams team play it will teach you respect it will teach you discipline it will teach you hard work it will teach you success and it also teach you that after success how to be grounded so all those aspect is a, is a sports aspect and if if that's your filter number 1 the second filter is then which is the most prominent sports in the country but by the we didn't require any phd in marketing to answer that question so the choice became very very simple yeah and fortunately for us uh, the 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 availability of the sponsorship was also critical because this is a single slot sponsorship it's not like i'm taking a a a a serial sponsorship where there are eight or 10 brands there is only one brand you are there or you're not there fortunately for us the timing worked out we wanted to we were scaling up big time and the belief was coming together that sports will play a equally big role in the overall development so all this put together it was very very simple answer that it has to be the indian cricket team i'm i'm glad it is because you know i mean if 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 cricket and films can can push people to you know imbibe a better way of getting educated why not i mean as i said you know when we were discussing earlier that uh, even in the pulse polio program where in government was struggling a bit in certain parts they ended up using a, a major celebrity a major film star to actually push people and it worked so so why not uh, let me ask you something i mean of course the last one year has been very exciting and very very good from a business point of view by juice but uh, and i and if i if i have my data right we have about uh, 10 million users currently right active registered users in the industry per se Uh, and i i mean i'm assuming it's about 4 and a half 5 billion uh, worth of industry currently is if, if my math is correct where do you see this going in the next say uh, you know two years from now i don't want to make it a longer than two year period but do you see uh, uh, this is a conservative estimate or do you think that this can be maybe four times more or five times more in the next two years no so uh, i think uh, it's it's not 10 million yeah byju subscriber base Yeah, is about eight zero million. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm so sorry. I I I meant a hundred million. I I my my apologies. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So at an industry level, as a segment, it would be close to about hundred odd million. While the total school going population, if you look at IRS and all this uh, uh, industry India database, it, it it stacks up to about two sixty to seventy million. So. Technically, we are only one third. The penetration of ed online education is only one third. That's right. point number one. Point number two is the paid subscribers at an industry level on a hundred million base would be at about five and a half to six million. So that means we have penetrated only five percent of the of the category. That's so right. there is a humongous headroom for growth, and we believe that. year on year this growth should be at an exponential level both at top of the funnel as well as more and more people taking the annual packages but you also see that this industry is for the next 2 years will really be about expanding customer base or is also going to be about expanding into say newer areas for instance one new area that gets talked about is the online extracurricular uh, world for instance not just the formal education is that something that you see also coming in and fueling the growth or will it be just a question of adding more numbers in terms of the headroom that you spoke of 
it will be both. It will be a two to pronged approach. You will certainly be looking at growing your top of the funnel, adding more and more people to the larger kitty, as well as having strong content pipeline, having strong launches coming in. So, for example, as I mentioned, uh, we launch social science. Yeah, now we are launching social science across more grades and more boards. So that's a that's a product thing. We spoke about English, and what has also happened is that. parents are looking at creating or at least ensuring the the students get something beyond education so you have lot of extra curricular coaching so there is online music happening online sports happening online uh, coding happening online one to one maths happening so there is enough and more happening over and above education is all happening in the online space and that continues so again so sports extra curricular and education if you look at it at a holistic view and if if one goes through this journey we don't see a reason that that person will become a very very strong rounded personality as he goes into the professional journey as as well as his professional career okay uh, my final question to you atit is again something linked to technology because this is an industry that works with the technology and that is uh, pretty soon enough i mean we will have 5g uh, coming in as well and and that is going to change a lot of things as well uh, obviously for the better i mean there are of course some sectors who may i mean the broadcast sector for instance has their own issues with uh, you know some of the 5g proposals we have but for, uh, for the consumer there couldn't have been a better time in terms of upgrading the technology so i'm assuming uh, that once that comes in even the animation design and the quality of uh, you know the transmission that currently exists or people can access currently is going to grow exponentially and and the good thing and i think the best thing that could have happened is india is also a very very strong base for animation design per se i mean we have very very skilled people who work on it world class uh, you know professionals who work on the industry so i'm assuming that 5g is another thing that byju's and the entire tech industry is looking at very very closely yes absolutely so see technology we will not be able to be stagnant on the technology front every year every month every minute there is a technology advancement happening but one is geared up one is preparing for it if 5g 5g technology is available we need to test it out everything will happen at the back end with our tech and the product team and whatever needs to be done to make the consumer experience better than what they are having the business is committed to do that with the sole objective that we will provide the right level of uh, infrastructure with the right level of content with the right level of teaching uh, pedagogy to make the consumer or the student journey much much better than what it was before right uh, i wish we had more time and we could have continued forever but this is a very exciting conversation ati thank you so much for giving us insights on how wiseus works and of course how the whole edtech sector is looking up uh, and i'm i'm sure the people are watching it would also be a little more educated about understanding the whole dynamics of how the edtech industry is working and the need and the use for it because you know it's very easy to label any industry uh, it with a broad paint brush i mean i think once you understand the the, the specifics of it it becomes easier to imbibe and adapt to that so thank you very much it's a it's a great industry education something that we need in india much more than we have currently uh, and i'm absolutely delighted to have you tonight uh, thank you atit uh, and and thank you very very much bhai thank you very much for having me